I want to share a couple of things uh, that I learned from Romans 8 verse 28 and 29. Uh, Romans 8 talks about uh, God working out all things for our good. Uh, and every time I thought about this was in the past, every, when I was going through any trial or difficulty, I always felt uh, that, you know, this good is going to come in the form of some you know earthly blessing like you know if i if i lost something because i followed christ maybe i'll getting i'll get something better than what i've lost uh, but i've noticed that in verse 29 it says uh, that good that romans 8 28 talks about is uh, becoming conformed to the image of his son in other words it says uh, to be to become like jesus uh, so the good that romans 8 28 is talking about is uh, becoming like Jesus. Uh, the second thing that I learned was uh, you know, suffering is necessary to become like Jesus. You know, I was thinking this week, when do I quote Romans 8.28 to myself? Is it when I'm joyful or is it when I'm in sorrow? Every time I've quoted 8.28 is when I was in sorrow. And if 8.29, you know, if 8.28 precedes 8.29, that means it's my sorrow that's making me like Jesus. It's not my, you know, abundance or anything. And there's a verse in 8.18 that aptly describes this, 8.17 actually. Uh, it says, we are haves with Christ if indeed we suffer with him. You know, being like Christ, being a hair with Christ, it says you have to suffer like Christ. And... Uh, you know, even when Bible talks about Jesus, uh, it says in Hebrews 5, 8, even though he was a son, he learned obedience through the things he suffered. Jesus became the man that he was, the man that we all admire because of the sufferings that God allowed him to go through. And I've noticed that, you know, from these two verses that suffering is so necessary to become like Jesus. And Peter says in First Peter chapter 4, uh, verse 1 it says since christ has suffered in the flesh arm yourselves also with the same purpose because he who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin so as to live the rest of the time in the flesh no longer for the lusts of men but for the will of god you see when we suffer like christ we cease from sin we become holy and we no longer live for ourselves but we live for the will of god and i saw that this is what it means to become like jesus uh, and i hope uh, we'll be encouraged when we go through suffering uh, knowing that all this is producing life of christ in us thanks Uh, it encourages me to know that the whole Trinity is for me um, and to know that, um, like it says about the Father, that he who did not withhold his own son for us, will he not with him uh, give me all things, uh, constantly fill me with his Holy Spirit and his love. And I always want to see uh, the prodigal father running towards me uh, shamelessly and to think of the Holy Spirit who constantly intercedes for us, intercedes for me, um, that he's long-suffering and he's patient patient and um, he makes me um, realize that I belong to the Lord and uh, he knows my heart and yet he uh, prays for me uh, according to God's will uh, to make me like uh, Jesus and to know that Jesus too is interceding for me, um, sitting at the right hand uh, of the Father and praying for me and it, it just encourages me that the whole Trinity is for me, that we're on the winning side against the devil and um, to think of how I want to respond to God's love for me, I pray that I would love him like I never have before, um, like that beautiful song we sang today, once it was a blessing, now it is the Lord and I pray and believe that the Lord will make that true in my life. Um, that I won't hold on to the blessings, but I would, that he would hold me, that he would hold my heart fast and uh, hold it tight for him, and that I would truly belong to him. And I pray and believe that the Lord will help me. Amen. Okay, good morning. I'd like to share from verse 23. This is a verse that challenged me this week. I'll just read it real quick. And not only this, but also we ourselves, having the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves grown within ourselves, waiting eagerly for our adoption as sons, the redemption of our body. I was thinking this week about that phrase, grown, and the way that this word grown is used in this sentence. 
I was thinking about someone, let's say, who had arthritis and their whole body was just aching. Every time they moved, it hurt. And I would imagine that person would feel, oh, I wish I had a new body. I wish I had a body that wasn't so, so painful. So that's the, that's the picture I get when I think of this word groan. Now, for us Christians, we know that when we go to heaven, God's going to give us new bodies. I don't quite know what it's going to be exactly, but we know that it won't be like our current bodies, which will decay over time. It'll be something very, very glorious. And I was thinking, well, what's the reason why Paul's groaning here? Is he groaning because he has a lot of knee pains and shoulder pains and I want to have this new body which doesn't have all these physical ailments? I don't think so. I think about the life of Paul. He never complained about his physical uh, conditions, his physical challenges. So what did Paul really want? Why was he groaning in this, in this phrase? And I was reminded of what Sandeep was sharing with us last week, how in Romans chapter 7, Paul just talked about how he wanted to be free from this body which had such a desire, such a strong desire to sin. And that's what challenged me this week. Because if I look at my own life, I don't think I have that same groaning that, that Paul did, if I were to be very honest. And I think the reason why is because I don't have the same attitude towards sin that Paul had. Paul hated sin, but often I feel like my attitude towards sin is more, I would avoid sin. And there's a difference between avoiding and hating sin. For example, I can avoid not looking at a pretty woman walking down the street, but to actually hate the sin of lusting with my eyes, that's a, something altogether, altogether different. And that's something I haven't yet gotten there uh, in my life. So as I think about a life that can be free from from sin, a body that can be free from sin. What are the sins that would matter the most to me? Is it is it anger? Is that what I would be free from? Is it lust? And I was also reminded this week of a study that we did in the men's group a few years ago. This is the uh, New Wine and New Wineskins uh, book. And we did a chapter which said that and Brother Zach was sharing how the root of all sin is self-centeredness. The root of all sin is doing our own will. And I said, well, that's the sin I really want. So for me, the challenge this week was, Lord, I need your help. I need your help to give me this groaning in my life, to give me this groaning, this longing in my life to be free from sin, specifically the sin of wanting to do my own will, but to be completely uh, centered in God. And so that's what challenged me this week about Romans 8.23. Thank you.